Hey guys, how's it going? Another day at Just Roaming Design. Today, we're gonna do the alternator. This is part of the North American Van Life Industry Tour. We are building out my van to be a podcasting and video production studio as well as home on wheels. I am having a 48 volt system. So my alternator is going to be pretty powerful. It's coming from Nation's Alternator and it arrived here to Washington. Uh, we are in an area called Washougal at a place called Just Roaming Design. Got a crew here that's kind of come in here. They're trying to figure out what tunes, tunes to play on the, on the radio in the shop. But we're gonna install a, a, a alternator today. Pretty cool. Can you describe what, what is my alternator? Like what is the power and uh, what makes it unique? So we're going with a, a Nations uh, and Starter alternator. It's gonna be 48 volts, uh, brand new on the market as well. So the big difference is gonna be the watt output. So, I mean, if you look at a traditional like 280XP that they, uh, they sell, you're looking at about 3,500 watts, whereas with the 48 volt application, you're going to be looking at about 5,000 watts plus. Um, and then we're also doing a wake speed integration. So, typically, they offer a Balmar or a wake speed 500, and then we're doing a wake speed 3000, which is going to be a bi directional DC to DC charger. So, you'll be able to pull off your stock alternator at whatever we set it to, and then also utilize the full uh, 48 volt alternator directly into the 48 volt bank. And is there, is there an amperage on it, or? You're just measuring in watts. It's roughly about 100 amps, okay. um, but we also need to limit this alternator so it doesn't exceed the horsepower on the engine. Uh, whereas the other ones, you don't because it, it won't just use that much power. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's literally too powerful. Yeah, but it's also, I mean, a lot of people use amps uh, yeah. in the industry, but using amps is kind of redundant because you have to then reference voltage, yeah. whereas watts stay the same across the board. So, yeah. I mean, typically we talk in watts uh, within the industry. Got crew here to, to put it on. Yep. Sounds good. Should be good. Let's go. It's cold today. Uh, I believe the alternator is sitting right here. Uh, the wake speed's over there, all the wiring. So we're not using this wake speed. Yep. We are using this wiring harness. Sounds good. So this is a wake speed 500. Yeah. The same as upstairs. Okay. Except the wake speed 3000 has a wake speed 500 inside, but it also has a bi directional uh, switching element in it okay. from the 48 to 12. So that goes from 12 to 48, but then also 48 to 12. I'm so happy that this is nowhere near as, as involved as the ProMaster is. We're not adding a pulley. That's cool. That makes this even easier. We're not, we don't even have to add a pulley. It looks like we've got a double pulley possibly already on there. I can already tell by the weight of the instructions. <laughs> right, 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 right. These are high quality forged brackets. I was, uh, thinking, yeah. I was thinking they were gonna be like, Steel, the ones they just know? did used to be, they were like or the, the the last run of them. And we, we just got these ones in and I was like, looks like a this is an caliper. upgrade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like super cast, cool. Cast, yeah, they're nice. I'll always plug Adam and, and Nations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they just make- The best. The, I think the best, yeah. So easy to install, especially with the new Techni brackets. They come with all the instructions, like the guys behind the, the phone and the ordering, like Seth and Whitney are awesome. They just do an incredible job. Cool. That is not what I'm looking for, I guess. They never give you the actual Thread count, thread count or any of that stuff. So you're just kind of like, okay, well, there's three of these. There's supposed yeah, to be three right, of these. Right, right. Who knows? You know. When we did the uh, ProMaster, and even on the Sprinter, there's all sorts of steps where you have to install these finger tight. Then you install things around it. Then you then remove you one part and you come back and you and you oh, torque them all. And then okay. you put it all back together. It's just like one step forward, three steps back, and one step forward. You know. All right. So Sam is underneath. Uh, well, the other Sam. <laughs> there's a few Sams here. It's underneath the, the van. It's going okay, I guess. We did have to remove this uh, this air uh, air hose. What is this, the intake? Yeah. It goes to look like, it looks like it goes to the turbo. Anyways, once we got that, we were able to pull off the uh, AC compressor. Now we're just working in some brackets. Some of you might be thinking, what is the use of a secondary alternator? Well, secondary alternators are, are very, very useful. They uh, charge your system at a much, much faster rate than 
almost any solar system you could find. As a matter of fact, this alternator, when it's running at peak efficiency, uh, should be able to put 5,000 watts of power into your house battery system, your house electrical system. The 48 volt system that I have is sort of uh, the way things are going here. It used to be like 12 volt battery systems, 12 volt alternator systems, but the higher voltage allows for a lot more efficiency in charging. The engine is gonna be a, a real important tool for me to top off my batteries if, if and when I want to. This alternator is you know, one of very few that are uh, out in the market in the United States right now. So same with the wake speed. When I install the wake speed, I'll be one of uh, <laughs> a few dozen vehicles uh, of this type that will be able to say that they had this wake speed. I mean, obviously, when you listen to this, maybe if it's down the road, there'll be more. But for now, yeah, it's 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 quite... Uh, um, ahead of the curve sort of so the 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 system in this van is is going to be very very interesting this is sort of going to be a continuing saga uh, especially with regards to the electrical system we are basically building in as much as we can now before i build the interior the batteries the the inverter charger the switches the lcd uh computer system that, that i'll be able to control this entire system with it requires the interior to be finished in order to be placed properly. We're just gonna go through and mount everything, get everything ready, but not connected. This is about as far on the alternator as we're gonna go today. It's on, it's mounted. Uh, we have to hook the belt up, obviously. But once that's done, it's just gonna sit there spinning for a little while until I come back and uh, switch everything on, get the batteries working, so. This is a really, really interesting material to make heated floors out of for vans. Sam came across a, a load of material and couldn't pass it up. Cool. First time credit. <laughs> All right, guys, I was, uh, I was not going to talk about this because I thought maybe I could just really quick really quick get through this problem but i guess the whole point of sharing the experiences of installing these sorts of things is to talk about the pluses and the minuses the the ups and the downs well um the the alternator is installed that is not a down that's an up that's really really cool and that alternator i i cannot stress this enough that that alternator is part of a a pretty advanced system that will set me apart from other off-grid van lifers by a couple of factors we're also talking to an in-floor heating company and we're actually going to use this for the in-floor heating system inside of the van and so that's going to be very very cool we'll take a little break here to look at the sunset that's starting to come very very nice what they're going to do is they're going to cut the track for the uh, pipes, the PEX piping that's going to provide heat to the floor of the van. And this, if you can see, this stuff is pretty thick. The PEX piping, the tubing, is, is a thinner diameter than the thickness of this material. So they're going to cut channels in this material, and the, the tubing is just going to sit indented into that uh, channeling. It'll hold its form. It'll be able to sit right there on the floor. And it's, it's thermally uh, advantageous. I'll describe more about the flooring. It's going to be very, very cool, and the floor is going to go in right here but the mistake okay so I installed this window Saturday this is a clamp ring window meaning that there's a ring on the back of this window on the inside that clamps against this area which is the outside and the two sandwiched together and, and voila you got yourself a good window this one is a van windows direct window and this window is urethane uh, caulking basically it's a, a bead of caulk that goes around the outside edge that seals the window in place you press the window in and then oh, voila you have your window not a not a bad way to go this is how automotive windows are actually uh, secured in it was getting late on the day uh, that I cut the holes in the window and 
I wanted to drive it home and so I really quick put a bead of urethane around the outside edge. I thought it was good. And I stuck this window on and then I stuck this, oh, this window on too, which is not there anymore because I, 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 I did a bad job. Uh, when I laid the bead of caulk, the bead of urethane on the outside edge, I ended up uh, not pressing it against the surface of the van hard enough and there were gaps. Let me see if I can show you, because there's gaps in, uh, in this window here, but there's also gaps in this window. And you can see, you see that, that light that's coming through? That's behind the, uh, the glass, that's between the glass and the van. So that's a bad gap. And I think that there's another one in here, but there was a bunch in this window. And uh, so I took it out today and what a mess the urethane has not cured yet so when i pulled the window off with uh, i i used a, a wire and i cut the window back out and i cut the urethane but the urethane is really really um wet and when i say wet i mean like it's like tar so this is the outer edges are, are cured but the inner edge look at it, it looks kind of like a like a layer right so that's cured that's cured and in the center I mean that's that's just gooey gooey nougat in the center and I am making a hell of a mess so much so that I don't think I can finish this I need some more paper towel I need some more denatured alcohol and I need to let it cure a little bit more I think it's a little bit too chilly for it to cure fully in the 36 hours that it says and so um, I have the window off and uh, I might have to strategize on how I repair the window and fix the gap in the window in the back. I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to squirt urethane a little bit more strategically into those areas that are open. Because overall, the seal is great. It's just those gaps, and maybe I can fill those gaps in. I do uh, love the sunsets here. They're very, very nice. If you didn't see the... If, if you didn't know how cold it was, you'd say it was sort of like a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a, a Sahara sunset, but no, no, it's very, very cold. And I, and I love how it reflects off of the side of the vans here. That's always very neat. So anyway, seeing as though I, I, I messed up the windows, I can't take this van home with empty, empty windows. Also, the alternator isn't completely finished. We need to get a belt in order to get the alternator finished. So I'm going to leave the van here tonight and I am going to uh, go back to the house where I'm staying. Um, I'll come back here tomorrow and hopefully finish up the windows and, and get more more finished. But anyways, I was not, not happy. This window all weekend, I was frustrated with it. And today I thought I was gonna repair it and I ended up making it worse. But uh, it's not the first time on this project that I've done something that has, that it has worsened an issue. But when I do finish cleaning up this edge, and I'm able to reseal this window, it will be, it will be better. It will be better, but it's going to take a, a lot of work. It's going to be a mess. <laughs> this is what it's going to be, but it'll end up being good. Anyways, I'm going to go, this is their office up here. I'm going to go up there. They're actually expanding. Um, they're, they, they have a really, really interesting project. I don't know if uh, S Sam's going to let me see it, but because um, it's not quite ready yet. But they're they're working on plans on a new facility and they're gonna have like a lot of opportunities to make some really really cool stuff i've seen the plans and uh, i've listened to his ideas it's gonna be really really neat i love that that windows when it reflects the the sun sunsets oh, so nice so, yeah so they're gonna be expanding to something much bigger much cooler and it seems like a common theme amongst all of these van life companies uh, if you do a good job you're growing quick because the industry is growing quite fast